Hello, families. Hello, my sweet littles. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. I know I am. Guess what today is? A very special day. Today is Earth Day. And Earth Day, we get to celebrate how fabulous and wonderful our Earth is. And guess what? We get to give back to our Earth by planting something or experiencing our nature and going outside and looking and protecting our plants and animals that live on our planet. And so today I invite you to do a couple of things actually. I would love it if you're able to go outside and plant a seed or a little seedling plant. Remember that I got a cantaloupe and a cucumber. And later on today, I will be showing you myself planting those in our garden. And if you could plant a plant today, if you have a seed or you have a plant that you can put into your soil in the ground or in a raised bed, then I would ask that you do that today to honor our earth and to give back all of the things that she has given us when we can give back a plant to grow in her soil. Now, if you don't have a planted plant, that is okay. And guess what? I'm also going to invite you to go out, take off your shoes, go walk in the mud, go put your toes in the grass, or feel the moss under your skin, under your feet, on your skin. I'm going to ask that you walk out and you touch softly a leaf. I want you to go and smell a flower. I would like you to look at an insect. I would like you to see the birds in the tree. I would like you to hear the wind through the trees and the birds singing and any other sounds that you might hear. And I would like for you to taste a vegetable and fruit. Ask a mom or dad or caregiver or loved one if they can offer you something that is grown in nature, like a vegetable or a fruit. Mm -hmm. So if you're planting something, that's amazing. If you're experiencing nature, that's amazing. But one other thing that I can invite you to do, and if you do any of these things, this is the one thing that I really hope that you accomplish today. Remember how we made our hearts? We made our hearts out of white paper. What I would love for you to do is to color it in blue and then make green pieces of land just for each continent, just like on our maps that we do at school. So North America, South America, Australia, Europe, Asia. Sometimes you won't get all of them on the heart because the heart is a certain size. But if you can get some of the land continents, masses that are on our earth onto that heart, that would be great. Color those in green and color around it blue. And guess what? We're gonna show all of our friends and family and neighbors and community that we love our earth. And when we're finished with our earth heart, we're gonna place it in the window with all the other hearts that you've created for your community. And that is something I hope that we all get to do together. And what I'm gonna be doing is when I'm finished drawing my heart, I'm gonna post a picture of it and put it in the window. And then later on today, you will see me planting my cantaloupe and my Persian cucumbers. So the two plants that, are, that I showed you, I actually have three, but the two types of plants that I have, I'll be putting in my garden and you'll get to see a video of that as well. But before I do show you our book for today, I'd like to give you a little bit of history of myself. And this I have had since I was about 18 years old. And Joshua's dad and I, we had been best friends and we purchased this together at a store over in the mall called The Nature Company. This was a long time ago when The Nature Company existed. And this is an oil lamp. And this oil lamp had oil that you would pour into this hole at the top and then it had a cotton wick that would rise out from inside and out. You would stick it down in and it would soak up all that oil. And then you could light the top and it was like a candle. And 
I have since lost the little um, piece that goes inside, but I'm thinking of restoring it. And this little paperweight or uh, oil lamp reminds me of our earth, which is why I wanted to show it to you. It's a very special thing for me and I treasure it. Is there something that you treasure in your house? I hope there is. I'd like for you to take a look at those things, protect them, and put them in special places so you can see them every day. Well, we have a beautiful book to read today. It is one of my absolute favorites by an author. Her name is Virginia Lee Burton, and we have read Virginia Lee Burton um, many times, and the one that we've read recently is um, Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. What's interesting about Virginia Lee Burton is that she would draw all the pictures before she created the story. That's very unusual. She would sit and draw and imagine her world, the world of the book that she was creating, and then she would go back and write the story. So in her mind, those pictures were the story. So when we're asking you to imagine a story of your own, you can be just like Virginia Lee Burton and color all the pictures, every single page. And then as you're looking at the pictures, you can write your story or you can do it the opposite way as well. But I know that most of you really love to draw. So I really invite you to try to do something similar to Virginia Lee Burton right now and practice. We need our, our yummy scents. So let me put my lavender on. Do you like putting lavender on as well? Mm. Mm. I would like for everyone to take a deep breath. We're going to inhale, ready? Five seconds in, ready? One, two, three, four, five. Exhale. One, two, three, four, five. Lovely. Okay. Let's light our candle. And thank you both. I love being able to light your candles. The Little House by Virginia Lee Burton. Once upon a time, there was a little house way out in the country. She was a pretty little house, and she was strong and well built. The man who built her so well said, This little house shall be never be sold for gold or silver, and she would live to see our great, great grandchildren's great, great grandchildren living in her. The little house was very happy as she sat on the hill and watched the countryside around her. She watched the sun rise in the morning and she watched the sun set in the evening. Day followed day, each one a little different from before, but the little house stayed just the same. So you can see here, the sun is waking up and then he's going up and up and around. Oh, excuse me, he's going this way. Waking up and then setting. But there's the house. In the nights, 
She watched the moon grow from a thin new moon to a full moon, then back again to a thin old moon. And when there was no moon, she watched the stars. Way off in the distance, she could see the lights of the city. The little house was curious about the city and wondered what it would be like to live there. So on this page, you can see a calendar of the moon and how it gets smaller and then bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger until then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And then on this side, you can see her looking at the stars when there is no moon. And way over here is the city lights. Time passed quickly for the little house as she watched the countryside slowly change with the seasons. In the spring, when the days grew longer and the sun warmer, she waited for the first robin to return from the south. She watched the grass turn green. She watched the buds on the trees swell and the apple trees burst into blossom. She watched the children playing in the brook. In the long summer days, she sat in the sun and watched the trees cover themselves with leaves and the white daisies cover the hill. She watched the gardens grow and she watched the apples turn red and ripen. She watched the children swimming in the pool. In the fall, when the days grew shorter and the nights colder, she watched the first frost turn the leaves to bright yellow and orange and red. She watched the harvest gathered and the apples picked. She watched the children going back to school. It almost looks as if She's smiling and she has eyes. In the winter, when the nights were long and the days short and the countryside covered with snow, she watched the children coasting and skating. Year followed year, the apples grew old and the new ones were planted. The children grew up and went away to the city and now at night, the lights of the city seemed brighter and closer. So here's the winter scene. They are building a snowman. Mm -hmm. And here they don't have a car. They have a sled and it's pulled by a horse. So before there were cars, people used horses to pull them round. How fun would that be? One day, the little house was surprised to see a horseless carriage coming down the winding country road. Pretty soon, there were more of them on the road and fewer carriages pulled by horses. Pretty soon, along came some surveyors and they surveyed a line in front of the house. Pretty soon, along came a steam shovel and dug a road through the hill covered with daisies. Then some trucks came and dumped big stones on the road. Then some trucks came with little stones and some trucks with tar and sand. And finally, a steamroller came and rolled it all smooth and the road was done. So you can see here all of the trucks that came carrying the different loads. So big rocks, little rocks, tar and the roller. And here is... Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann. They made an appearance in this book. There they are, digging the road.
Now the little house watched the trucks and automobiles going back and forth to the city. Gasoline stations, roadside stands, and small houses followed the new road. Everyone and everything moved much faster now than before. So here they're calling them a horseless carriage. It still looks quite different from the cars that we drive. And here is the town with more modern looking cars. But still there's a couple people who have a carriage. And you can, you can see the lights just went out. <laughs> you can see, can you see? Hopefully there is more houses and they're closer to the little house. Hmm. Oh, there we go. More roads were made and the countryside was divided into lots. More houses and bigger houses, apartment houses and tenement houses, schools, stores, and garages spread over the land and crowded around the little house. No one wanted to live in her, in her anymore and take care of her anymore. She couldn't be scrolled for gold or silver. So she just stayed there and watched. Oh no, look, she's all crowded by all of these buildings. The city, which was way back here, has now creeped forward and surrounded her. And here's the road. And now nobody wants to live in her. Hmm. Now it was not so quiet and peaceful at night. Now the lights of the city were bright and very close and the street lights shone all night. This must be living in a city, thought the little house and didn't know whether she liked it or not. She missed the field of daisies and the apple trees dancing in the moonlight. Here she is, she's trying to sleep. She looks tired, the lights are on all the time. Pretty soon, there were trolley cars going back and forth in front of the little house. They went back and forth all day and part of the night. Everyone seemed to be very busy and everyone seemed to be in a hurry. So you can see there are these trolley cars that are attached to the electric wires that are being strung all across. And the attachment here is called a pantograph and the pantograph is allowing the electricity from its lines to reach this car or trolley and then that's what's powering it and here is the little house she looks very sad and everybody's rushing about mm -hmm. pretty soon there was an elevated train going back and forth above the little house the air was filled with dust and smoke and the noise was so loud that it shook the little house. Now she couldn't tell when spring came or summer or fall or winter. It all seemed about the same. So you can see there are the underground cars, but now the raised trolley cars sort of like our BART station. Mm -hmm. And here she is, very sad. Pretty soon there was a subway going back and forth underneath the little house. She couldn't see it, but she could feel and hear it. People were moving faster and faster. No one noticed the little house anymore. They hurried by without a glance. So now there's three levels of transportation. You have a subway underneath the ground. Then you had the electric car in the middle and then the train on top. And here you see the little house and she's looking very, very distressed.
Pretty soon they tore down the apartment houses and tenement houses around the little house and started digging big cellars, one on each side. The steam shovels dug down three stories on one side and four stories on the other. Pretty soon they started building up. They built up 25 stories on one side and 35 stories on the other. Wow, look at how big these buildings are. Here she is so tiny. Now the little house only saw the sun at noon and didn't see the moon or stars at night at all because the lights of the city were too bright. She didn't like living in the city. At night, she used to dream of the country and the field of daisies and apple trees dancing in the moonlight. The little house was very sad and lonely. Her paint was cracked and dirty. Her windows were broken and her shutters hung crookedly. She looked shabby though she was just as good a house as ever underneath. So here you can still see all of the activity and these huge buildings. And there she is in the small space in between them. Now, why would you think that she would see it only at noon? At 12 o'clock, imagine the sun is rising here and it's rising, rising, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve in the afternoon, the sun is shining directly over the little house. And then once the sun goes around the buildings, she can't see them anymore. Then one fine morning in spring, along came the great great granddaughter of a man who built the little house so well. She saw the shabby little house, but she didn't hurry by. There was something about the little house that made her stop and look again. She said to her husband, that little house looks just like the little house my grandmother lived in when she was a little girl. Only that little house was way out in the country on a hill covered with daisies and apple trees growing around. So you see all the people hurrying by and here you can see right here is the woman who's the great great granddaughter of the man who built the little house. they found out that it was the very same house. So they went to the movers to see if the little house could be moved. The movers looked the little house all over and said, sure, this house is as good as ever. She's built so well, we could move her anywhere. So they jacked up the little house and put her on wheels. Traffic was held up for hours as they slowly moved her out of the city. Here, the traffic has been stopped and so many people are around. And there, she's leaving and finally going back. Going back home, maybe? At first, the little house was frightened, but after she got used to it, she rather liked it. They rolled along the big road and they rolled along the little roads until they were way out in the country. And when Little House saw the green grass and heard the birds singing, she didn't feel sad anymore. They went along and along, but they couldn't seem to find just the right place. They tried the Little House here, and they tried the Little House there, and finally they saw a little hill in the middle of a field and apple trees growing around there said the great, great granddaughter. That's just the place. Yes, it is, said the little house to herself. A cellar was dug on top of the hill and slowly they moved the house from the road to the hill. Ah, so here's the city and they took the road and they finally found this lovely space. The 
the windows and shutters were fixed and once again they painted her a lovely shade of pink and as the little house settled down on her new foundation she smiled happily once again she could watch the sun and moon and stars once again she could watch spring summer and fall and winter come and go and once again she was lifted and taken care of so she's looking at the sun and the moon and the stars and all of the seasons from summer to winter and here she is happy as can be sitting on the top of the hill surrounded by apple trees and finally once again she's lifted and cared for Never again would she be curious about the city. Never again would she want to live there. The stars twinkled above her. The moon was coming up. It was spring and all was quiet and peaceful in the country. So it's springtime right now, the very season that the little house was placed back on a beautiful hill so she could live her life in the country. And I'd like you to think about all those beautiful things that she saw. The sun, the moon, the stars, the plants, the birds, all of the things that the little house came to appreciate again once she was back in the country. And guess what? All of those things are right outside your door as well. And since today is Earth Day, let's think and pretend or imagine like we're the little house being lifted and transported back into something beautiful in nature. And go find a sunny spot on a little hill or in a little patch of grass and sit and observe and watch and listen and learn about nature today. I love you all so very much. And I'm so happy to see all of the beautiful things you're creating at home. Please always ask to share with me. I would love to see the things that you do during the day. I love you. Have a wonderful day.